Here she is. Hello. Hello, Can you hear me? How are you doing? Hi. How are you, Jacques? I'm fine. Very happy to see you in a live event. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so excited. Yeah, and we are excited too here. We are following you on uh, on LinkedIn and on Instagram. So you are becoming a star. This is great. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate all your guys' support um, after the program. It's been really awesome. Very good. So uh, maybe um, we should... Uh, oh, I see you have friends there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kat. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe we should start by... Uh, doing quick introductions. Uh, if, if, you want to, if you want to start uh, telling us a little bit about you and, uh, and after we'll, uh, I will ask you some questions and we can, uh, we can argue a little bit about different subjects. You know? <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. It's 8 a.m. here. I'm in the Bay Area. My name is Molly Miklos. Um, I started VoiceOvers by Molly LLC about two years ago now, and I started my journey into voice acting. I kind of stumbled along it. Um, my background is in media production, so I love all aspects of that. And so I started voice acting about a year ago, or two years ago, like I said, and it's been really great. And um, found the Dubbing Academy about a year ago and learned from you guys. And um, I have a commercial demo and a character demo as well. I've been taught by many wonderful wonderful coaches um, around around the United States and it's been great to connect on Instagram and social media with uh, different voice actors in the community so it's a little about me I'm just working along here and doing auditions um, as many as I can <laughs> so um, do you are you planning to stay in the Bay Area or go a little bit more versus uh, Hollywood where all the acting is, uh, is located yeah, um, I've been in the Bay Area about 10 years now. I love it. There is um, a decent amount of media production here. LA is definitely more of that market for animation, you know, doing um, more uh, mocap or anything like that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from it if the opportunity arose. I mean, why not? If it's, you know, I grew up, um, I was born in Southern California and have family there still. So I'm not opposed to that if it happened. <laughs> great, great. So, um... Just a quick, quick introduction about myself. Um, um, so I, I founded the Dubbing Academy a few years ago, uh, three, three years ago. And uh, before that, uh, I spent most of my career at Warner Brothers before joining uh, Trust Perfect uh, five years ago now. Um, and um, I spent a lot of time, like over uh, more than 25 years in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, working for Warner Brothers, and I was very lucky because I was in charge of the dubbing and subtitling. So I was fortunate enough to work on the all the Harry Potter, the Batman, and the Looney uh -huh. Tunes. And my first gig was uh, Space Jam, so that was a, a, a good uh, a, a good start. Oh, awesome! I love <laughs> and, that film. <laughs> yes, childhood. And, uh, and um, you know, I, I left. Uh, I left Warner, and I joined. Uh, I moved to Spain. Now I'm in Barcelona, uh, which is a nice change. And yeah. um, and um, I'm working with great people here. And uh, everything I I learned during all these years in LA, working on the big movies. Um, now I try to pass. You know, I pass the torch to the younger generation. So uh, you guys can. Uh, can do some nice stuff too, you know. Um, so about about uh, passing the torch, I have a first question for you um, about training, about learning. Um, what do you think about continuing learning, continuing the training, even if you are uh, already a voiceover at any stage? Do you think it's important? What do you think about the continuous training, continuous improvement, if you want? 
Oh, yes, absolutely. Like, even for me this year, um, starting out the year, I knew um, my goal this year is to make a promo or radio imaging demo. And so for me, um, I already have classes. I had a class last Saturday. I have classes the next four continuing Saturdays. So for me, training is so important because the industry changes. There's different trends in voiceover sure. as well. And, um, you know, COVID was more of a low period or it's a good period for voiceover, but it was more of like a heartfelt message and now they're kind of changing um the trends of voiceover in that way and so it's definitely a good thing to keep training um if you can't pay for classes because classes can be expensive but if you can't pay there's a multitude of different options oh am i getting an echo oh we're back you are back. Yeah, we're good. I just kept hearing myself. I was like, ah, a loop. <laughs> um, but yeah, as I was just saying, training is very important. There's, um, if you can't do classes, you can't do any kind of trading. There's always social media. You can try to do challenges for yourself, acting challenges, you know, connect with other actors in that regard. There's so many podcasts that I listen to, you know, free podcasts, uh, YouTube videos you can look at. Um, working with a coach one-on-one -on -one if you can is absolutely fantastic because they, you can do your audition and you can do your, um, you know, your script and get feedback from them and not just, you know, beat yourself up in your head. Am I doing this right? So absolutely training is so important and it just kind of keeps you fresh and on your toes because you never know, like, Correct. what could happen, what gig Correct. you could get. And, and especially these days, uh, I think the actors, like the musician, I'm a musician too, and uh, <laughs> yeah. as you know, I apply a lot of musical theory in the, in the dubbing. Um, yes. I think we have now for the actors or for the musician, we have much, uh, much more uh, ways to continue to learn the um, social media, everything on internet. I mean, when I was student at the conservatory, I did not have all of that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and even when I started, when I did Space Jam for Warner, uh, it was a very manual process. We did not have all this, uh, all this uh, media, and it was uh, it was really, you know, very analog, <laughs> uh, day by day on a piece of paper, you know. Um, <laughs> yes, um, and I would say, like um, being a musician, I practice every day my instrument, and yes. uh, and this is something that I noticed often: the people uh, don't play enough with their voice. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I, I'm a guitar player, I, 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 I do mainly jazz and, and bossa nova, and, uh, and uh, I always try to explore new sounds on the instruments, you know, you pick your strings uh, closer to the bridge, softly with the finger, with whatever, and, and you create more sounds, and the sounds are going to help you to change your way of, uh, of playing, your way of so it's exactly the same thing with the voice. I think not enough people, maybe they are a little bit shy, you know, uh, because if you start talking like that, you already change your attitude and, uh, and you change your character. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I would advise people like, like you just said to, you know, not only to do courses, but to try to explore their instrument, because as we say in the academy, your voice is an instrument, so yeah. we have to play with it. <laughs> yeah, and people, like for me too, starting with, out with character voices, I was like, oh, you know, no one can see you in your booth, so it's like, why not just go for it and like talk in a weird voice? Like, why not just do it? Because like, that's what brings it out and like being, emo you know, your face Absolutely. and scrunching it up and like being physical with it. Like my coach told me through motion comes emotion, you know, so you want to just like get into it and like, don't be afraid of making your character voice, you know, just come out of you because that's what people want. That's what anyone, casting directors, anyone wants from an actor. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Um, so now, um, you, you made it, you, and uh, one more time, your assignment for the Dublin Academy were really nice. So uh, very happy to have you on the graduated student pool. And yes. um, so what advice would you give to somebody who wants to, to become a professional voice actor? Maybe 
a little bit different for the voiceover or for the dubbing, but you have somebody who's, who come to you and say, I want to become a voice actor. So what do you say? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, going back to the last question, training is so important. Before I even did any auditions or anything, I found a coach that I liked and that I was reputable and, you know, made sure I was comfortable in that regard. And then just working one on one with them was really beneficial. Um, and then just constantly learning as well. Um, and then once you get going with all your learning and you're feeling good, um, you're going to make your commercial demo first is what I was always told. Right. A commercial demo is very versatile for casting directors, production houses to hear what you sound like. So you definitely want to get a commercial demo. And then once you have that, you're basically, you know, you're ready to go. You can start sending that out to people. Um, uh, just going along and kind of marketing yourself as well as you can uh, through email and on social media is a great place sure. now to do that. Um, and yeah, just kind of uh, finding what area of voiceover you want to exactly. continue on. Yeah. I was going so to ask you, Matt, do you, do you think it's important to, to know a little bit the direction you want to go? Because, you know, voice, uh, so much. working with the voice is huge. You know, you can do a narration, you can do a advertising, you can do dubbing, dubbing for animation, dubbing for live action. It's huge. Yes. You have so many opportunities. So sometimes maybe yes. people are a little bit lost because it's, it's too much. Absolutely. Yeah. Like my coaches uh, would tell me, you know, well, your voice sounds very commercial or like you want to do character voices. So it's just about to finding, you know, what you have time for, what you like to do. Do you like character voices? Well, if you don't, you know, you could go more into medical narration or something like that or audiobooks do have character work too. But, you know, you could find where your voice fits and how comfortable you feel in that acting regard and then just kind of continue in that path. And for me, it was characters. And then I found dubbing, which kind of meshes into that. So it was like, oh, let's learn dubbing. And that's why I found Dubbing Academy. And so, yeah, so it was just definitely about finding my voice and where I wanted to continue on. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I noticed uh, over the years that uh, people are really specializing in one field. You know, yeah. it's pretty rare to have people that are doing voiceover and let's say the being for animation, you know, because yeah. to, to do Bugs Bunny, you have to be in a special set. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If you can't really, I was just reading yesterday, um, the actor who did Elvis Presley's new movie, like he was, he couldn't get out of the voice for like two years. Like he's still having problems, not speaking as like Elvis Presley would. So it just goes to show you how, you know, how it stays with you after so long. So you have to be, yeah. you know, dedicated to that. And yeah, there's so many like genres of voiceover, like, you know, 30 off the top of my head. Like if you look at a list and so you're, you just need to steer into which category you like and maybe new, new things will pop up, but yeah, it's just about focusing. And, uh, and that's true that uh, the States now is experiencing, uh, is discovering the art of dubbing. Because I remember uh, when I was younger, the same movies, uh, you have the, the birdcage, uh, um, scent of a woman, all these movies were huge um, European movies. And instead of dubbing the movie, they just redid it. So that right. was a Hollywood solution to import a movie in America. You just redo the movie with new actors and, and that's it. Now they are discovering that the dubbing is nice. It has yeah. to be very well done, obviously. And talking yes. about the versatility of the voice, um, because America is discovering dubbing, I think it's going to be very good for everybody and you are going to have work a little bit like uh, the France, uh, uh, Germany, Spain and Italy where people can live, can, can make a living uh, being a, a voice actor, which is not the case in a lot of countries. Uh, I remember uh, uh, casting uh, for the Looney Tunes actor in, uh, in Denmark and Sweden, you know, there is not a really a professional pool of dubbing actors in Denmark and Sweden because there's not enough work. And so I was using actors from the theaters. So these guys were, uh, were playing uh, Shakespeare at night and during the day they were coming and do the Looney Tunes. And it oh was, my gosh. And it was very cool. <laughs> I can't 
can you imagine? Oh my gosh, you're like to be or not to be, and then later you're just putting on a goofy character voice. That's amazing. <laughs> but that was a stretch, and uh, but they were doing uh, they were doing great, and uh, uh, you know we spent a little bit of time with them, but every day they had to readjust to the voice and etc. That's why it's so important to understand what you do to be able to recreate the same voices. Exactly. Yes. Recreate them and then have the emotion and, you know, acting behind it is all voice acting is that's part of the word is acting. So definitely all of that. <laughs> um, would you would you have questions for us? Um, before I answer a, a few questions, but uh, yeah, I saw a few online. pop in. Uh, the Dubbing Academy has their program online. Yes. I was just looking at that one. Yeah, on it's on, on demand. On demand, and then you get to record um, audio clips, and then have them uh, an instructor give you feedback, which is great. Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, I was going to ask uh, what what is coming up for you in twenty twenty three. What is Dubbing Academy focusing on, or adding any curriculum or anything? So, <laughs> so <laughs> we are uh, we are going to try to do um, um, more uh, workshops. And uh, because we realize that um, the Dubbing Academy now is a great uh, uh, theoretical tool, if you want. You learn a lot of theory, but people have to practice by themselves. And I know sometimes it's very difficult. You know, um, um, when I was a student at the conservatory, I had to practice a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, the lesson was short, but the practice was like endless. So um, instead of uh, leaving that to the students, we are going to start doing more workshops, uh, maybe online, maybe physical. I would like to do more physical. Unfortunately, I'm in, uh, I'm in Barcelona, so I will have to travel a little bit. Um, and we are now introducing the, the, voice, the, um, the dubbing academy in, uh, in Africa. We are going to go to Kenya. We are going to go to Vietnam and we are going to go to Morocco for French um, because, um, because the Transperfect acquired a, a company called Eventy and, uh, and they have uh, studios there. And obviously, um, you know, a few years ago, I wrote an article on the emerging markets, which is, you know, there is always an emerging market in dubbing. Uh, so these are emerging markets, and of course this is great for the Dubbing Academy to try to help these people that don't unfortunately have your training, and, and etc. So uh, more physical workshop uh, or online workshop, but really workshop to, to do exercises together and, uh, and going to exotic countries. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And it's so great because, um, you know, COVID brought that about in, in a good way of connecting people virtually and being able to find each other and do these workshops. You know, I did so many Zoom classes uh, to practice acting because that was the only way to do it in 2021. And I think it's great in that regard that we can talk, I can talk to you and we could do like a live dubbing session. Like I had another live dubbing session that I had a coach with and she was, uh, I think she was in Los Angeles, but you know, we did it and I could see it and she played it back. So it's just amazing how technology can happen yes, like that. Yeah, it is good. And, and the platform you did your assignment uh, on, you know, Studio yes. Next, is now allowing an engineer to control the, the computer of the talent. So I could be in Spain and I could place, uh, I could, uh, I could uh, press record and you are in your booth and you don't have to worry about anything and you you let the, the engineer control your session. So we can do more and more of these things because you're right, technology is really uh, helping us to more communication, more interaction. Definitely. Very good. Very good. So it's uh, 1719 in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> 17, yep, 819 here on the West Coast. <laughs> uh, and you have a question for Cody. Uh, Molly, which was your favorite class? Hey, Cody. That's <laughs> my friend. Um, he, oh, my gosh. I love all of them. I think the character ones because I just love making fun voices. 
And it was great because I got to find my voice and you had to structure the character, give it a name, a location, you know, an emotion. So it was really fun to bring the character to life and then you just go about talking about them, you know, in your voice later in the day and stuff. So I think character voices, but dubbing, dubbing Academy is fun too because they had character, a character one in there as well. And that was fun. And copying over, you know, the live black and white classic movies too. It's kind of fun to be like, ah, oh, screechy and stuff when the dramatic character came out. <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to admit uh, over my, uh, my years at Warner, the fun part for me was working with the Looney Tunes. That's, uh, you know, yeah. and, it, and it's not the uh, easiest, obviously, because the, the characterization is so intense. But uh, I think that's what I preferred anyway. Uh, yeah. And we have a question from Michael. When you remote record, do you use special software? No, it's uh, exactly Studio Next. The same software we are, we are using in the academy um, is just that uh, I would take control or somebody anywhere in the world would take control of your computer and, uh, and we see the same screen and you could record and uh, the engineer, anybody can, uh, can become the engineer. Yeah, and when it comes to um, Studio Next, it was it was great because it's kind of like a timeline editor. So, you know, most of us actors use, uh, I use Adobe Audition. So it was great because it looked like a timeline editor for me. So, you know, really well laid out, you know, it had the lines that I needed to do. And then the timeline, you just kind of push the play button, the you know, and it goes. You do your lines, you can listen back. So it's really cool to see how the layout is. I liked that about the software. And it's on your computer, yeah. so what better? Exactly. Uh, you don't need anything. And, and especially, you don't need a big hard drive because there is nothing in your computer. Everything is uh, streaming. Um, we'll probably do, uh, we'll, we'll do another uh, session on, uh, on Studio Next because we have a lot of uh, improvements the last year. Uh, a, a question for, from Nadia. Does it Portugal? make any work with talent in Portuguese? Oh, of course. Yeah, how many languages are you guys, you're doing a lot now? <laughs> the, the course is in, is in three languages, uh, English, French, and Spanish. Uh, but uh, we had students uh, doing in different languages. And as you know, um, we don't really, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a linguist, so I'm not going to judge the acting on, on the, um, on the vocabulary and on the on the language on the language, so it's more on the attitude, the acting, the voice characterization. So that can be uh, that can be any any language. You know, it's not a problem. Um, like a lot of people are asking me when you when you do uh, when you mix movie because we were centralizing all the movie all the mixing for Harry Potter and all these movies in uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, part of them actually and uh, people were asking but how do you mix movie when you don't understand I said well the mixer needs to understand so we have native speakers to check the intelligibility but when you mix a dialogue with uh, music and effect it's like when you mix a, a saxophone player playing with an orchestra you don't play the language of saxophone and you are able to mix music so you know it's the same concept <laughs> Definitely, that's a good. That's a good way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we finishing? So I think we. It's twenty three. So Molly. Oh, it's right. so fast. <laughs> it, yeah, I know. We'll we'll redo it. We'll redo it. It'll um, be fun. Great to see you, and uh, you. and happy to follow you on on social media. Thank you. Very Thank you. nice to see that you are doing great and. Uh, we were a little part of it, so this is great. <laughs> thank yes, you thank you. That. It's nice to see you live for the first time, Jacques. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much. Molly, thank, thank you. you and thank you, everybody. All right. Bye -bye. Have a good rest of your day or evening, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>